Is Alibaba stock still worth investing in today? or is it going to continue on its downward trajectory? In this video, I'm gonna break down the bull and the bear case for Alibaba stock in under five minutes and give my take at the end. Quick shout out to Etzel Kaplan who requested that I do a five minute analysis of Alibaba stock in my last five minute video on Google. And if you have an idea of what I should do in the next one, let me know down below in the comments. Now, without wasting any time, let's get right into it. Okay, on the bull side of things, Alibaba has a massive share of the e-commerce industry in China. One of the fastest growing global economies and with hundreds of millions of people that may be joining the middle class over the next few years or decades. In addition to e-commerce, Alibaba has business lines in cloud computing, in media and entertainment, in internet service providers, in banking and financials, and many other sectors. And all of those business lines allow Alibaba to collect massive massive amounts of data which they use to improve their efficiency and their profitability. They also have a big moat and a pretty significant network effect that comes from having so many separate but also interrelated and interconnected business lines. In terms of the financials, Alibaba had massive revenue of almost $250 billion in 2021, of which over 20 billion was profit. The growth projections for the company are looking strong. And in 2021, they also saw a net increase in cash of over $20 billion. So the financial position of the company is quite solid. Some big name investors are very bullish on Baba stock, including Charlie Munger, who famously doubled down recently on the company. And also a lot of professional analysts maintain either a hold or a buy rating for the company. And taken alone, that doesn't necessarily mean that the stock price is going to go up, but it's certainly more bullish than if the situation was flipped. After the pretty significant price drop in the company's stock over the past year or so, Alibaba is looking much more attractive on a valuation basis. The price to sales ratio is hovering just below 2.0, which is crazy for a fast growing tech company. And the price to book ratio is around 1.5, which means they're barely valued more than the total of cash and other assets that they have on the books. Now, despite all these positives, there's definitely a bear side to this argument. So let's dig into that now. The first point to mention is that growth appears to be slowing. Top line revenue growth for 2021 was actually around 10% year over year, which is not great for a growth focused e-commerce tech company. And also the profitability actually shrank by about 70%. Now this is definitely related to the next point, which is that macro trends are definitely hurting Alibaba with pandemic lockdowns in entire cities and supply chain crunches, as well as some of the other issues with inflation, Alibaba's profit margins have definitely been squeezed and compressed. Another bearish point on this company is that it's more difficult to verify and trust in the numbers that are being reported because simply put, since it's based in mainland China, it's just not subject to the same levels of scrutiny and regulation and the same requirements for open audits as companies are that are based in the US. And that leads into the next and potentially the most significant bear argument against investing in Alibaba, which is that there is a threat that the SEC is going to delist the company from the New York Stock Exchange because of a new law in 2020 that requires stricter auditing requirements for other foreign companies. And since Alibaba doesn't yet meet those standards, if they don't comply, there is the risk that they could be delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. Now, if that happens, it doesn't necessarily mean that the company is going under and it's still gonna be traded in other foreign markets, for example, on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, but it does mean that it will be much more difficult for North American investors to purchase shares of Alibaba stock. And also that's probably gonna drive down the demand, potentially decreasing the price as a result. Finally, there's also a pretty significant geopolitical risk that comes as a result of the Chinese Communist Party having the potential to rug pull all of the people that invest in Alibaba. We've seen glimpses of this in the past, for example, with the ant IPO that was supposed to happen until the CCP stepped in. And on Honestly, you never really know when you invest in companies based in China, what's gonna happen. It's a pretty significant geopolitical risk. Now, of course, on the other hand, if the SEC does not delist Alibaba from the New York Stock Exchange, and if US-China relations improve over the next few years, that could be a massive positive catalyst for the company. So really, you have to weigh what you think is most likely. As for my take, I will not personally be investing in Alibaba, regardless of how impressive the financial statements look and how good the valuation of the company appears to be on a price to earnings or a price to sales basis. I know there's some people with very impressive investing track records that are bullish on Alibaba, but on a risk reward basis, I just don't see it. And I personally refuse to invest in a company that could be rug pulled by the Chinese government. Quite simply, from my perspective, there's better ways 
to find value and to find solid potential investments without accepting that type of geopolitical risk. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. As a last thought, I'll leave you with this great tweet from Tom Nash who says, Dear investors in Chinese stocks, there are over 7,000 companies on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ that are not on the brink of delisting, nationalization, imprisonment of founders, cancellation of the company by government, and that you don't have to buy contractual rights in Cayman shells of. And I think that sums it up perfectly. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this five minute analysis. Let me know down below what you think the next one should be, and I'll see you later.